used to be cool. We're beginning this match. I'll do a ban and picks discussion after this is done. So enjoy the music and watch these bans and picks. Take a swing at a wrecking ball and I trade for my downfall and find a way to reconcile. Who questions my ability? In my heart, it's not worthwhile. It's a bloody battlefield where some look down, others hear. In the end, it's all the same. All you can do is play the game. Do we say goodbye? Sharpening my feathers.
Okay, guys, so welcome to the quarterfinals of the Play versus Summer Showdown between Willow Canyon High School and Carl Hayden High School. Excuse me. Um, my name is Coach Alfred, and I coach Willow Canyon. So let's talk about these picks and bands. So we'll go ahead and look at Carl Hayden first. Carl Hayden pat band Aurelia and Wukong, both strong players. Um, that definitely was some scouting on their part. Um, Evelyn, I'm not quite sure where that came from because no one on our team really plays Evelyn. Jin is always a strong band, and our ADC does like to play the Jin. And Zaya, not quite sure where that came from. But for their strengths, what we're looking at here is it looks like they're completely out of order, which is not okay, but we'll talk about this. We're going to make some assumptions here. Talon is a strong mid-pick, um, and Zach is a very tanky jungle that's something that the rest of their team doesn't have. Shen, Shen is a good top player. If we are playing a Shen top, but this could be a Shen support, but I'm thinking a Shen top, though he is technically in the support position. Um, Lucian is a strong ADC, but there are some limitations, especially against the Caitlyn that Willow Canyon chose because he can be outranged. And Brand is just an all around beast, either um, support or jungle, or I've even seen some brand mid, but looking at the talent, I'm going to assume it's a brand support. Now, flashing over to Willow Canyon, um, we have a Jax top. Jax takes some time to scale, but once he does, he's a monster, um, especially some ganks. Volley Bear, especially with some of the latest buffs, they had to nerf him back down. Very, very strong, very tanky, and does a lot of damage. Lilia with her true damage, pretty good. Um, we tend to play her as a mid, a mid, and our mid player likes to roam. So a strength for Willow Canyon. Caitlyn is a beast. Um, Caitlyn just outranges everybody in the game, has a lot of CC um, with her traps. And if Willow Canyon can really use their range advantage here, that Lucian doesn't have much of a chance. Morgana, strong CC. Um, just a good support player all the way around. Frozen Cat 3030 loves to play Morgana. So this is looking to be a pretty good game. So we got about 30 seconds. I'm excited. Um, remember, this is a single elimination tournament. So at this point, winners go on and we'll play tomorrow. And losers will go home. So good luck, everybody. Have fun on the rift. I'll play some music until we get ready to go. Oh, wow, the game did not kick on. I apologize for that, guys. Oh, here we go. Do some League of Legends. So we're going to drop in. We are on a three-minute spectator delay, so let's, let's take a look here. So overall, um, top lane, uh, that brand is a little overpowered uh, compared to our top laner. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the Talon is slotted into the jungle. So we'll, these are not quite right. And they're actually breaking some rules. So we'll have to see how this goes. Oh, I will turn up the mic. Thank you, Aspect Enter. Um, probably I'll talk up too. That, that might be part of the problem. I may, might be talking a little quiet. Um, Lucian, uh, Lucian is slotted for mid, which is not correct. And I do know their ADC is their lowest level player. So this, this uh, player is in the wrong spot. So I will have a conversation with their coach right now. Uh, Lilia, Caitlin, and Morgana, all very high level, out level, all the other team uh, by themselves alone. But Zach and Shen, so. All right, guys, good luck. This should be kicking on any second. I'm seeing 100% here. I'll be bouncing over to Discord to have a conversation.
So here we go, guys. Uh, looks like uh, Cesar Chavez, or excuse me, Carl Hayden. I apologize. Looks like Cesar, Cesar Chavez. Carl Hayden is starting bot lane. They're going with a pretty standard. Um, almost looks like a three point, but they're not covering that top, that top river up here. Um, Zach is throwing out that vision, headed back to base. Willow does not look like it's invading. Uh, Volley Bear looks like going back. Probably going to swing down and do blue. Um, the ADC and support are waiting for an invade and or fall back to a leash. So good job with them. And Jax is hiding in the bush in case anything happens. Jax is that ambush top. So good around. Shen is hanging out under, under tower. So that is a Shen top that we're looking at. A Zach jungle. Lucian, ADC, and brand support along with the talent mid. So I was correct in that. So let me get you scoreboard up here. Get some general timers. So an aggressive mid push there by Lilia from the Canyon. Pushing Talon back and definitely getting that CS advantage at five to zero. So Carl Hayden's definitely gonna have to make some pushing to get that CS back. Um, except for that's not the right lineup, so it's five to two, I'm sorry. Normally these should line up equally. So jungles do look the same. Their clears are about the same. Uh, Willow is looking to do a full Full bottom clear, and then move up to the top section. One of the interesting things about League of Legends is that first 10 minutes. It's so much about leveling, getting that CS, um, making sure your vision is there, and there's no ganks coming from jungle or floaters. And while it's important for the game, it is in some ways very boring for an observer. So, what's really exciting is when you get to the laning phase after about 10 minutes or so. One of the big things we look for in this phase of the game though is objectives. So who's going to be taking your dragon? Who's going to be getting your herald? Can it be done in the first 10 minutes? And what kind of CS advantage can you get? Oh, looks like a pretty big push there. Bottom. <laughs> Lucian almost went down, but managed to back up. Um, Onion Queen seems to be doing a pretty killer job keeping Talon down and away from any kind of CS. So we're looking at a, sorry, I have to bounce around 18 to 11 difference. Oh, oh, oh. Volley Bear is moving in on the Zac. Ooh, a stun. Is he gonna get him? Oh, good jump, good jump from the Zac. Manages to get away and not lose those buffs. That's a great job for Carl Hayden's jungle. So Volley moves down, maybe looking for a, a gank, but talent isn't there, so I think they might be moving down either for a bot gank or just setting up a dragon. And that uh, almost kill, why it did not get the the kill that Volley Bear would have wanted, definitely put that Zack on his back foot, so or back pseudopod, is that what we're gonna call it with Zack? And the Zack is very scared of the Volley Bear. Definitely moving away, losing some of his time killing these Raptors. Now, if we look at Vision here, we can see that their mid laner is definitely watching out for that Volley Bear gank. Good placement of a ward here to stop any kind of movement from the south. But Willow is definitely winning this Vision game. They have Vision and Tribush here. They know Zack is coming. Um, Zack has seen that. Seen that uh, ward and good job with the Zack ending that vision. So there's an attempted gank, but there's Zack almost looking like he's going under tower, but not as effective as I think he would have wanted. Willow is unaware of that. Oh, Talon got 
got really scared of that Morgana. Oh, good job. First blood for the Morgana for, with that Ignite there on the brand. So taking away a key player, especially time now, but also Morgana going down. So one for one, but getting that first blood. Now, one thing you guys should be aware of in the play versus tournaments, there are extra points awarded for certain objectives. First blood, first turret, um, Dragon Soul, number of barons, etc. And so Willow definitely got some bonus points that if this were an official season tournament, that would push Willow up in the rankings. So it looks like top lane is pretty even there. We're looking at a 32 CS Jax and a 36 CS um, Shen. Shen might be pulling this out a little actually better. No. Oh, and here comes the gank, the mid. Volley bear gank, the drowsiness, the sleep. Oh, Shen is down. So what a great gank. Opens up a lot of possibilities for that Jax to get caught up. Let's see what's going down there, but that's also just pure gold for Willow's mid, and that's dangerous because Willow, Willow's mid is their best player, gold ranked player. And you don't want to feed that, that kind of player. That vision though, look at the vision Willow has. They completely dominate the river. They know where everything is and everything that's happening. Absolutely fantastic. The Morgana here is kind of holding off that wave, freezing the wave in the midpoint um, while she waits for her Caitlyn to come down. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you uh, let your friends know. Subscribe to the channel or follow the channel. This is Twitch, not YouTube. And uh, we'll get some League of Legends action and Rocket League action starting next week as preseason for Fall 2020 begins. And Willow placed very strongly in the spring before the spring shutdown. Our Rocket League team was ranked second in state before we had a week off for our spring break and other schools got a... Oh, it's really going down. It's really going down. Can she get away here? It looks like Talon and Zach are definitely got her got her in a hole. Oh, with the escape. Great job, Lilia. Well, how far is this Talon gonna go? Chase her. Oh, what's this Talon doing? Oh, and here comes the volley bear with that all. Just crazy. Can they get Zach before Zach redirects? Oh, double kill. Crazy. Anyways, back to where I was <laughs> before that awesome action. Our Rocket League team was ranked second in state, but then moved dropped to an eight position because the other schools got a free week before we shut down. And so our Rocket League teams are amazing. We will start streaming those games on Thursdays at 4 o'clock. We also have a JV team. Uh, this year, each school is only allowed to run one varsity team where last year you could run unlimited. So we have one varsity team, our Rocket Cats, that will be taking also a JV team, our Rocketeers. Uh, looking for good things from them. Love to see what's going to happen. Our League of Legends team last year ended the season at rank 12. Um, our highest rank at one point was four, and we were actually number one in the state in uh, So good things for them. We did lose one player. Our senior went to Grand Canyon University on the League of Legends scholarship. So we miss him, but good luck with him. Um, he played in the Arizona State Lottery uh, tournament this summer. Had some pretty good showings against ASU and U of A and some other schools. And several of our seniors this year are being actively recruited by several other schools. So good things coming out of Willow Canyon. Now, one thing we're looking at is here we are at the nine minute mark and neither team has made a play for the Dragon. Willow Canyon is up about 2,000 gold at this point, which is a pretty substantial number at the 10 minute mark. So we'll see what happens. The Talon is roaming. Talon is going for that vision. Eliminating Willow's advantage there in the bottom river. But this Volley Bear is so stacked now, he, he can probably solo this Drake without any help. But what is Volley doing? What is Zach doing? He sees the Zach. Is he going to make a move? It's going down. Oh, missed from the Lilia. 
was gonna go bot lane, but let's see what they're doing. Looks like they're trying to ambush and get some work going. But the Zack is moving bot lane. Is Willow collapsing up on Drake? On Drake? No, not yet. Maybe that is what they're doing. And they do not see the brand there in Tribush. That could be potentially devastating, but it is not. So good job, Willow, getting that dragon at the 11 minute mark. Probably could have been a little faster as a coach. We'll have a conversation with them. It's volley clear, 63 to 54. So that early almost gank definitely put the Zack on the back foot. If we look at our ADCs, we're looking at a 90 to 54 difference. Anytime you have more than a 20 CS difference, it's not going to go well for whoever has less. Um, the Morgana uh, and the Brand. The Brand is pulling more CS, but all that CS that the Brand is pulling off the Lucian is actually hurting their ADC and not helping the Brand at all. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But the Morgana is dying quite a bit more than she normally does. So we'll see how that goes. So good use of a shield to kind of avoid that Lucian ult. And so this Talon has no idea where the Lily is. So that's ending up devastating here on bot lane for Willow. Top lane, once again, we're just kind of even out. It's shown with 83 CS versus the 74. But that Volley Bear coming up. Oh, devastating. What's that gonna do here? Zach's just gonna use his ult to get away. Kind of a waste, not gonna lie. Now let's see if they move on Harold. Just go for vision. So we got three minutes up for the water drake, so we're definitely not going with a water or fire drake for Dragon Soul. So that is a Earth Drake, Earth Dragon or a wind drake. So speed or armor, what's gonna pop up for that dragon soul? So we got one minute on Dragon. Herald is still up and no one's made a play for the Herald here. Herald can definitely open up one of these lanes. So they, it's a good attempt here. Uh, or Willow? I'm sorry, I'm also talking to you. So one of the things that has been discussed between super coaches and play versus the chair is the order in which you pick slash draft. So one of the things as we saw in the draft phase is that you have five players. They have to be voted in this they have to go in jungle, or excuse me, top, jungle, mid, ADC support. Now, your top may draft, your top summoner may draft the uh, 
character that the support wants, but before the game begins, those those heroes have to be shifted to the proper summoner. So this is kind of a change from pro play, where this isn't really necessary, but high school play is always different than pro play. Whether you're in esports or football or basketball, the rules are slightly different in high school or in college or in pro leagues. So the pros, though, one of the things the pros do is the pro player will train for one position very specifically. While they understand the mechanics and can fill, since we're looking at top, the top player will primarily focus on top chance, and that's all they do. Um, there's not a lot of flexibility, but what you see in non-esports and in high school play is a lot of players will want to play two or three different positions. Sometimes it's just because what they want, sometimes uh, it's what the team needs because the team is all kind of low skill level and they don't know who's going to show up or win because you have commitment in high school. Um, but um, well, that, was a, that was a pretty good attempt at gank there. Oh, Zach's moving in. They're making a move on the volley bear. Will it work? Will it work? Oh, nasty. Good use of the alt there by one terror one. Um, so now we have a, uh, a dragon up. They're jungle down. They're mid down. That is definitely lane cryo. They're moving in for this kill, I think, before that dragon. Uh, Especially with the Red team double sleep. Kill. Um, right now we're looking at a 6k gold advantage. So Willow Canyon definitely taking advantage of the lane cryo there. With Zach and Talon probably working their way back. There's no way they can get there. So Willow Canyon definitely up 7k, two drakes but they have not made a move on the Herald and neither has Carl Hayden. So Harold's just sitting here by himself, kind of chilling, doesn't know what to do. Top lane is just kind of a pretty even push. Um, sometimes one of these guys goes up, sometimes one of them goes down. So this is actually a pretty good matchup, but it's a boring matchup. So, um, but one thing the Willow Canyon top player has definitely had help with is the jungle mid floating up to gank. Um, that's definitely shifted it to make it even. Honestly, I think that Shen's a slightly better player than the Willow Canyon player. So here we see Tal and Zach. Maybe they are making a push for Harold. Um, if Talon's a little confused, maybe the Talon's going to come up and try to push on this Jax. Um, this Jax has very little vision. Um, doesn't know what's happening here. Does not realize he's back in there. He's absolutely got destroyed by the Zach's ult. Bear making a very good decision not to engage that 3v1. But Lilia is coming up. But is Lilia going to make a move for the Herald? No. So they're just going to fight under tower here. This tower might be the first one to fall. Ooh, good use of a brand. Slap that uh, dot on there. So we're at the 19 minute mark at this point. Unless you can power down a Herald, there's no point in going after the Herald. He will transform into a Baron. So it looks like this game will be Heraldless. Uh, no kind of advantage for either team pushing the lane with that Herald. Don't know exactly why the red team is pinging Harold there with only 20 seconds left and it despawns at 1950. So uh, we'll see what happens there. So it looks like now everybody's just doing a quick clear of their lanes. Moving along, Caitlyn definitely pushed that uh, wave under under Blue's tower. Lilia is going after Talon. Bad use of a flash there. Um, great jump though over the. Great dodge. Great dodge by Lilia. Here comes Jax. Here comes Volibear. 
advantage of that what are they gonna do looks like willow's gonna do a clear of the enemy jungle but that jungle's already down and the baron is up so no more herald baron is up baron is very important a baron buff super useful um, we're gonna make a concerted push here it looks like yeah. looks like the lilia and the jacks are gonna make a push try to take down this tower before shen can get back Shen's on his way. Not quite sure why he's not using a uh, teleport. But Volley Bear's moving up as well. Shen's up there. So they got out from underneath tower so they don't take that damage. Oh, and the Shen fell asleep right under tower. Gonna get destroyed there. Really the breaks the... So good tower down. That first tower is out. Looks like Willow did get the first tower in mid lane. So. so they're roaming. Bot lane is just doing a good job keeping those two contained because if Brand starts roaming, Brand can really affect this game. Uh, Brand is a beast. So I can see the chat and Talon is pinging that Cloud Drake is spawning in 40 seconds, and I now know it's 30 seconds. So, blue team is definitely aware of this objective. They wanted to either gain it for the whole, gain it for themselves, and deny it to Willow Canyon. Let's see how well this goes. Um, Will is getting rid of that vision there in Tri Bush. They have no idea what's going on. Zach did see the Volley Baron, so kind of pulled out. Under tower. And another tower down. And that just gives so much lane cryo to Willow. And the Volley Bear is so fed at this point. This Volley Bear is 8 0 and 4. You could probably expect a ban in game 2 for the Volley. Um, this Volley can solo this. Let's see what kind of move Blue is going to make to try to steal here. Zach can come in here and use that smite. Let's see if they do it. Oh, the Lily moves in. Oh, good. Good smite from Zach. Oh, Zach. Good steal, but let's see if it was worth it. Was the, dra was the dragon worth three deaths? Possibly four. Um, I personally would not have made that sacrifice, but it, it is what it is, so we're now at the 23 minute mark. Willow's ahead and kills by a massive amount. 11,000 gold up. This is Willow's game for the Jews. So it looks like Bali is kind of building to tank Malakaz's jungle's items. When we look at the ADC between the Caitlyn and the um, Lucian, we're looking at basically 90 CS difference. Um, this Lucian just needs to find a place to farm and farm hard to try it to get up and here. carry. Otherwise, this Caitlyn is just going to start carrying for the entire Willow team. We haven't seen much of the Caitlyn or Morgana. They've just been kind of holding bottom. The stars of this game have definitely been the jungle and the mid players. But now we see Morgana floating up. Up to top, what's gonna happen here? Dominating. Red team double kill. Storm unleashed. But this Lily Caitlin bot lane is just absolutely destroying. There's a reason Caitlyn is pretty commonly banned. Oh, where's the talent coming from? Oh, there you go. There is that. There's that Caitlyn. Caitlyn definitely won that contest. Even though. Lilia got the kill. Bot lane is totally cleared lane turret wise. Morgana herself. Morgana is holding off Zach and took the tower.
guys. One of their players. Okay, you, you paused it. Good. So, because we have a three minute delay, uh, their coach just asked for a pause. So, we'll see this in a couple minutes on the stream. One of their players just lagged out. So, we're going to uh, take a pause coming up here. We do this as a courtesy. It's not fair to run a 4v5. And so, we'll just wait for them to get their internet connection back up. Hopefully, they can. Looks like this is about where we're about to get the pause um, because the other team. One of the things the blue team is not doing, something they can definitely improve on, is getting vision. They have no idea what we're doing. No idea that we're taking this Baron. When we get to the pause, we'll go ahead and pop some music on here for you guys. <laughs> Fifteen seconds on this Drake. Can blue team steal again? Maybe they can steal the dragon. One thing that Willow is not doing because they're going for this Drake. They're not really taking advantage of, of their Baron buff to really push into their base. A summoner has disconnected. So it looks like their top player. A summoner has disconnected. So here is here's where we're gonna see that pause coming up. A summoner has disconnected. 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 So we're having a lot of this. So I saw that. So I saw that. So this pause should be coming up here. We keep seeing this. Their top player, one of their top players here. So it's pretty standard that all the other teams. A there we go. Has disconnected. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some music on here because I know this lasts at least three minutes. So enjoy the music. I'll be right back. From the city of the sun, you would have stayed. It's only over when the day is done. I never knew you was a runner. Yeah. Yeah, I mistook you for a son. It don't matter what we think when it's all I apologize, I was a bad boy. I did not have my mask on when I went over to talk to my players. So I apologize for that. So I do know that this pause lasts another minute and a half. So we're just gonna have some more music, but this does end really quickly. Oh, here we go.
Blue Team's turret has been destroyed. So, we can definitely see taking advantage of this Baron buff here, giving those minions that buff, quickly dominating. Um, there's not much the blue team can do, especially once these cannons are going on these towers. Um, but the tower, the, the cannons kind of keeping the blue team in check. Here comes another wave where they lost their Baron buff. Little Kenny moved out. <coughs> Looks like Willow Canyon, instead of going for the win, is going for the first player. And that's another thing that they've been taught to do in regular season because each tower down, each inhib down, brings more points to the tiebreakers. So even if we're tied record wise with another team, it moves us up in the ranges. Uh, going for the points. More tower dives. This almost 20k gold difference is definitely telling, definitely geared up. Um, Willow and taking care of that. So, Caitlyn's taking advantage of her range. She's actually going to destroy that. Red team double kill. Blue team's inhibitor has been destroyed. Here we go. This is this is gonna be end of game. Great job, Willow. Destroyed. Good job, Carl Hayden. GG on the rift. Um, game two will be coming up, so we're gonna go to we'll talk about the game real quick and then we'll go to our transition. Okay, so great game all the way around. Um, their top, their top player, uh, Chen, definitely is their top player here because you can see in the high level. But just was getting killed so much by the volley bear. Very negative ADC here. Uh, excuse me, KDA here. Willow, the uh, mid jungle combination. That's 22 kills alone between them. Um, so let's go to game two. We're gonna go ahead and transition out.
Never pick a fight you can't win. Eventually. Fine. I don't need more enemies. She burns the bridges in my head by lighting up a fire. Bury my old thoughts instead so you can feel the same.
Cause I don't care if I'm right or just buy a bit more time I live alone with you inside my mind We would dance the night away to the morning light Can I give you all of my love? Do we dance the night away? Can I give you all of my love? Do we dance? All right, guys, I'm going to take off this mask so I can broadcast a little bit better, and I'm six feet away from everybody, so we can call it good. Hey, let's talk about these drafts and bans. So um, we'll talk once again about Carl Hayden first. Carl Hayden um, saw the danger of the Volley Bear, saw the danger of the Morgana and the Caitlin. So that's kind of interesting that that was their focus and not the Lilia, which they allowed Willow Canyon to take. So hmm, kind of interesting on that one. Um, the Gin, that was a ban earlier. Um, Willow Canyon's ADC definitely plays Gin, so that's a good ban. And the Aurelia, uh, two of my players are playing Aurelia a lot lately, so that's a smart scouting move. Um, flash over to Willow Canyon's bans of Carl Hayden. Echo, their jungle plays a killer Echo, so that's the reason why we decided to take him off the board. Yone and Set, once again, that top lane danger because the top lanes are so evenly matched. Taking away those tools from Carl Hayden was very important in the in the bands. Also the brand, the brand was pretty scary. Um, so the Willow players decided to go ahead and ban the brand and Senna is also a top, um, top support player for them, okay? Uh, for Willow picks, Willow's top took Wukong. So once again, another mobile top player. Graves for jungle. very uh, a, An A ranked in the meta. Very good. Um, can't go wrong with Graves. Uh, some of his late game stuff is not as effective as Volley Bear's Lilia. We saw the effectiveness of Lilia. Ash. Ash just got a nerf because she's so good. But she's still good even after that nerf. And Nami, we're now going for the heals. So Ash can stay up. Hold on, I'm about to cough. I'm sorry. <coughs> Too much McDonald's there for lunch. Darius, strong top, tanky, lots of damage. That can be a scary pick, especially um, if he can pin the Wukong down. Uh, the Amumu, strong, tanky jungle. This was surprising for us because when we looked at the, the jungle bands, we, we saw that most of his players were very aggressive damage type junglers. So both coming out with both a Zac and a Mumu was a surprise. I can honestly not tell you much about Kennen. I don't know Kennen. As a mid, Varius is a strong ADC, and Vigar support is always strong. Now, some of these players are in the incorrect positions, so that is something I will definitely have a conversation with about. You definitely have to put your top jungle mid ADC and support in the correct order during the draft phase. So 10 seconds until we got this going, so I'm going to pop some tunes as we get this transition going. Good luck, have fun on the rift, and remember, we're having a good time, but this is Summer Showdown. Winner, winner goes on, loser goes home. Okay, where is it coming from? I apologize, guys, if you're picking up um, noise in the background, but my players... Right now, where our, our streaming machine is in the same room as our as our playing machines. So it looks like Carl Hayden here. None of their characters have skins, but Willow seems to have gone pretty skin heavy. Uh, if you ask my son, skins don't win you games, but sometimes that boost in confidence definitely helps. So we'll see what happens in game two. Looking forward to a awesome match against Carl Hayden. Hoping. Hoping for a comeback because game threes are always fun. So let's see how we go here. Go ahead and get that um, scoreboard and objective timers on the board. So this time we have Willow bot side. Except it seems like I'm having some kind of spectator delay still and not seeing anybody. Nope, there we go. We got some lights.
seems like I'm getting a little lag. So hopefully we don't lag out here. Though if lags do happen, we have that option to pause the game at least twice according to the official rules. So let's see how each side goes. Is there gonna be an early invade going for that first blood kill? Or is are both teams gonna play kind of passively Welcome and watch Sanders watch for the others? So once again, we see that um, Carl Hayden drop a ward and leave, watching out for that invasion. I don't know what Graves and Wukong are doing here. Are they making a move for something? So glad my face is blocking the uh, chat. Some of the, we have some really good friends here on the Willow Canyon team, and they're teasing each other in the chat. And oh, it looks like Carl Hayden's getting involved too. Friendly competition, that's what we love here. Looks like Graves might be going for the red steel. Aggressive move from Willow Canyon. Uh, Carl Hayden's doing your typical blue clear, probably blue Gromp Wolves. Um, but with that red taken away, that's just going to put that Mumu on bad footing. So interestingly, oh. interesting, it looks like Carl Hayden swapped their top player to a support role. So they did make some definite team changes there. So they definitely put one of their top players there on the bottom, but their support player was ranked pretty high. So let's see how effective that is. That could have explained some of these picks. Ooh, a early stun on the various. Wukong's getting pushed by this Darius, but we're seeing a CS difference there. Darius is definitely Maintaining that aggressive nature that Darius, Darius players like to play. Jungle seems pretty even. Uh, mid lane is just getting dominated by that Lilia. Ash has a. Ash is pretty good on this. Uh, Ash is pretty good on this uh, bot lane. But here we have a Mumu. Is Mumu coming up for the gank? Now, one of the problems when you do a gank like this is. Your player is sitting there waiting for that gank. That gives the opposing player extra time to kind of power level and just get more and more CS. And so you can see that with the Graves at you know, 20 CS to 12 because Graves is just definitely working that. And then there was a smite on that scuttle. So let's see what happens. So Graves knows that uh, Mumu is just there. Mumu is coming in for an aggressive jungle invasion. Not seeing much. This is kind of a lot, a bit of wasted movement on both the Darius and the Mumu's part. <coughs> now this Vigar, this Vigar is gonna be dangerous here at the bot. The Vigar can lock so many people down with this crowd control. Let's see how effective this Vigar is, especially with the Barracks dropping his dots in there. Um, Vigar can lock down. Varys can definitely move in and take advantage of that. Ooh, a double fight. Here we go. Mumu's moving in. Oh, and the stun. Is the Wukong going to be able to escape? Oh, good flash. Good flash under tower. Um, but this, while the flash was good, um, the Mumu is just getting further and further behind the graves. This cannon, this cannon is just getting pushed. Almost a 20, a 20 CS difference there. Graves is doing very effective jungle clears, getting his buffs. At this point, the Drake water Drake is up, 
and it's a mana boost for whoever gets it. Both teams are a little mana heavy, um, so that's definitely a bonus. Means we will not be seeing a water soul, the dragon soul here. Okay, so that dragon is, or excuse me, that jungle is Boys definitely a lot more aggressive this time than he was as his Zac. And their mid laner still has that good early vision. So, good job for Carl Hayden. Let's come down here at bot. Lane seems to be frozen, so that's good for them. But we saw that in the first game that these two, that this bot lane was just kind of freezing in place until the jungle and the mid could start roaming. So we'll see if Carl Hayden can make its adjustments there and pick up that roam. Oh, Nami in the stun. Ash was not in place for that. And then we see that Vigar, that Vigar entrapment, that ring almost takes the Nami down. So Vigar is, is picked very often for that reason. Vigar is just so strong. Top lane, it looks like Darius definitely has the advantage. So that switch that Carl Hayden made was definitely advantageous for them. Uh, and it's working out well. Oh no, is the Mooma going down? Is Mooma going down? Ash has got her Q going. So much damage. Oh, didn't move in. Almost down, but that's probably going to cause that Mumu to go back to base just to heal up. Yep, indeed. So that's leaving the dragon open. This Grave's going to take it. Grave sometimes has an early dragon clear disadvantage, so probably a wise move on Willow Cannon's part not to go for that dragon, even though they have total lane trial yeah. there. Once again, we're seeing the the jungle invasion by Willow Canyon. Fantastic job. Take away your opponent's first blood. And Willow Canyon gets the first blood. Bonus points for season rankings if we were in season. So good job, Willow. Hey, Graves is going for that early dragon clear. Has a lot of prio there. Lily is up under tower. Ash is moving up to help. That's going to help Graves. Here, take less damage as they just end up burning down the dragon. That high nuke skin is pretty cool. I, I will have to admit, that is one I want because I like to play ADC as my secondary role, and Ash is one of my favorite players, even though I play a lot of jungle. So Wukong is down 20, 20 CS, so Willow is definitely struggling here in the top lane so this might be a difference maker if Darius can free up some space get that tower knocked down and start to roam because Darius is just a beast very hard to kill and without the tankiness of Volley Bear Willow Canyon does not have a tank and Carl Hayden is running one definite tank in Mumu and Darius can definitely build to tank so that might have been a disadvantage a poor draft choice for the teams. So Wukong getting vision on vision on river. Watch out for that Mumu gank. Mumu has that stun, so if Mumu can get the Wukong and stun him, Darius can definitely make that kill shot. And we see a 20 CS difference bot lane. So once again, that Vigar, their support is taking away CS from their ADC, which is only going to hurt them in the long run. Um, even though Vigar is pretty strong, he's not taking enough away to really matter. Oh, good use of the wave. Lilia comes down. Vigar goes down. And Various manages to, manages to escape. We see a Mumu there in River by himself. Willow pinging. Let's see what's going to happen here. Is the Graves going to move up? Darius is definitely moving down. What's going on? Oh, Graves moves up. Oh, that's scary with the nearsightedness. Ooh, Kennen comes in. Oh, it chases on for the Graves. The stun and Graves is down, taking away some of that jungle power that Willow Canyon has. 
and stealing the blue from Willow Canyon. Good roam from the cannon. And we'll see if the Wukong is aware of the Darius. He is. Good use of his clone there to distract away from the chase. We'll come back up top here and we see that uh, Cannon and Mumu are trying to clear this wave, get it away from Red Size Tower. Red has lost almost two full plates. Uh, Willow Canyon hasn't lost any plates. So the mid tower has a lot of plates missing. Willow Canyon just committing a lot of damage there down on bot. And once Ash can start to roam, once Ash can pop that stun combined with Nami's wave, that's a lot of control down there. The Varus is doing a good job on dodging a lot of these shots. So something on that. Remember their ADC is their lowest level player, only level 25. So a lot of inexperience there, but you can see that that player is definitely going to go someplace learning how to dodge, learning how to move. Yeah. Ocean <laughs> oh, two to one, two one loss there on bot lane, but the Herald this match is coming down. So Willow doing a better job on the objectives this time. Let's see if they make an effective use of that Herald. Bot lane lost the plate, might lose two here before they can come down. Yep, definitely two. And that gives Ash a lot of money. Oh, Mumu's doing an invasion. So was the Herald worth that invasion? We got a we got a Fire Drake coming in, Fire Dragon coming in at uh, 19 seconds. Let's see which side takes advantage of what. Seeding mm. that Lilia is never a good idea. What's Willow doing here? Willow's placing some vision, getting vision in that opposing jungle. Probably setting up that dragon. That's good because that dragon's going to give them some damage. But the various Vigar were setting up kind of a watch. Good use of an Oracle lens to clear out those. Red team's turret has been destroyed. And this now means that Willow Canyon has an advantage. Taking that first turret, opening up the pretty much the second turret mid lane. And now they're down here on drag and nothing can stop them. Mumu's being chased by the Lulia. Lilia's going to probably try to take that blue, that blue buff, or is Lilia going for the kill? Oh, let's see, that Mumu should have ran there, because even if, Unstoppable. even if blue team had taken that buff, Lilia would have killed her and stolen it. So Lilia now has buffed red-blue. Um, Willow Canyon has two dragons. Now, the gold difference is much closer this time, so... That is a good thing for Carl Hayden. Definitely showing some improvement there. Teleport for the Wukong, top lane to stop that tower attack. And once again, we see bot lane, just Willow Canyon, just pushing them up, taking out that Vigar, who's definitely the more, the biggest threat on bot lane. Various is good at dodging, but is really not making much effect here. Setting up the ooh, setting up the gank. Is it gonna work? Cannon's asleep. But Dominating. that true damage from that Lily is just incredible. Absolutely dominating. Blue team double kill. That's absolutely insane there. 
So one thing we should really, really look at, though, is his vision score. Willow Canyon, their lowest vision score is 8. Um, we're not seeing a lot of vision score here from uh, Carl Hayden. Vision score is so important in a game where if you know what your opponent is or where they are, you can plan much more effectively. Vision, vision, vision is something that every team should work on. Um, last hitting CS and then vision. When you have vision, you can dictate the board. You can dictate the risk. Come out on top. Look at that crazy three on one top. Here we go. Pro top tower is probably going down this time. Definitely. That's down. So now we're looking at three turns for Willow Canyon, none for Carl Hayden. Um, don't exactly know why bot lane hasn't pushed up and knocked out their tower. But this Mumu is a jungle invader. Loves taking the Willow Canyon jungle. But is that really helping their team? So all those kills, all those towers pushed a 2,000 gold difference to now a 7,000 gold difference, almost 8,000 gold difference. Um, this is what's hurting them. Let's see if the Mumu, what's going to happen here with the Graves. Seize the Graves. Mumu's still going to take those gold. Wasted a smite on gold. Nearsighted, slowed. Wukong is there. Blue team double kill. And bot lane also gets a double kill there. Good use of an alt by Graves there. Take out that Mumu. Bot lane is free, so the Ash is going to go back and spend some of that hard-earned money. Wow, Onion Queen got fed. Onion Queen is out there. Onion Queen is absolutely destroying it. Onion Queen is going to carry this game for Willow Canyon. Eight kills. Absolutely crazy. Darius has two kills. Not, oh, I guess. I'm sorry. I did not see the Vigar had four kills. So Vigar has a chance if Vigar can scale here um, to kind of take it up and manage to take out this Onion Queen and his Lilia. Third Drake for Willow, completely alone. Red team has no idea where they are. And that is a win Drake, more attack speed for Willow. That's exactly what Carl Hayden does not need at all. Willow Canyon to attack even faster than it is. Excuse me, Willow Canyon to attack even faster. Looks like we're having a bot lane mega fight here. So dive under tower. Absolutely critical. I wonder if Willow's trying to set up Onion Queen for a Penta, Penta kill. Um, Onion Queen does love to go for the Penta. Oh, Penta was stolen. Stolen by the Grave.
insane CS differences here that we're seeing. Um, the only place where we're seeing any kind of parity is top lane. I mean, there, Carl Hayden has a slight advantage. And support CS is not as important, but as a Vigar support, taking some of that is good, but that's also 49 CS that Varys could have been using to stack up against the Ash. That was an interesting flash there from Mumu. Definitely trying to get down on the Nami. That was good use of a stun to escape. Ash is trying to take on that Darius. That's not normally something you'd want to see. Um, Darius can normally handle an Ash all by himself, but... Okay, I should focus on the game, not on the Discord. But I, I do, I am a play versus super coach for the state of Arizona, along with two other people, Alyssa Beck out in Gilbert, and another coach who's brand new, whose name I forget, so I apologize, is out in Glendale District. And one of the things we do as super coaches is not only try to get new schools to sign up, but we work with existing coaches to help them out. And so having conversations with other coaches, so I should be focusing a lot more um, probably show my, my ADHD there. Wow, absolute killer here on the top. Is this going to be an ace for Willow? Blue team double kill. Blue team triple kill. Are they going to move in on this various and get that get that ace? Aced. Oh, but they, they did lose the Nami. Fish for dinner tonight, I guess. Many times this is Nami is dying. But Nami's definitely helping. If you look at her um, assist, 12 assists, highest assist for both teams. So those deaths are definitely worth it. Um, just makes you sad to see Nami die. Now it looks like blue team is moving in on Baron. Almost no vision from Carl Hayden here. Um, that Baron buff is killer. They got three drakes. We got a air drake up in 42 seconds. Are they going to go Dragon Soul Baron together at the same time? Uh, looks like they're definitely going to back, get healed up, and spend their money, especially after all those kills. What a great, what a great call there for Willow Canyon. Those guys are doing great. Now this is one of the things that happens um, when the other team gets ahead. You tend to bunch up here at your base and you play defensive, but without any kind of vision out in your own jungle, you don't know where the attack is coming from. Willow Canyon has the Baron buff. They're moving in on Drake that's dropping in five seconds. Red team can do almost nothing to stop it because they just don't know where Willow is. This is why vision is so important in this game because it allows you to dominate the map. Now they have, now Willow Canyon has the Wind, Dragon Soul, and the Baron. Um was kind of by himself there, but oh, the Wukong dies, which causes him to lose that Baron buff. Let's see if... Let's see if Carl Hayden can take advantage of it. Looks like they're just dying here. Um, one of the things that you see Willow Canyon do in that fight was you saw a lot of everyone turning on the same person. So now we have four of them dead for 20 seconds. This is definitely gonna lead to the loss of at least one inhib, probably a tower or two. Or, tower or two. Willow Canyon is not split pushing. It looks like they're trying to end this. 
One tower. Taking advantage of that Baron buff to get their minions up. Two towers down. Are they gonna go for are they gonna go for the Nexus or let's see what they do here? Or are they gonna start farming kills? Darius down. I it looks like they're gonna start farming. Nope, they're taken down. They are taking down the Nexus. GG everybody. Great game. Willow Canyon moves on to the Elite Eight in this in this tournament. Great job. And good job, Carl Hayden. Um, we want to see you guys again in regular season. So let's look at some stats here. Okay. So once again, we have Onion Queen that seems to carry along with the jungle. Um, ADC, um, lots of CS here, number two in CS. But if you can see the CS difference, um, Willow Canyon's top three players um, beat everyone on Carl Hayden's side, uh, out-leveling them, out-CSing them. Not a lot of kills from Carl Hayden's side. So great game all. Super proud of all this. So we're going to play some music. Uh, Hope you enjoy, and we will see you tomorrow when we go to the Elite Eight. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Take a swing at a wrecking ball and I prayed for my downfall and I found a way to reconcile cause in my heart it's not worthwhile. It's a bloody battlefield where some look down, others heal. In the end it's all the same. All you can do is play the game. Try.